Hello! I'm so glad you can join me. My name is Pixie. I make videos about the art I make and the books I read, and it's my birthday this week. On Sunday, April 14th, I turn 34, so I wanted to share with you why I get pretty emotional about birthdays, and I feel that they're important. I'm just very happy to be here to celebrate another year. And um, the series of paintings you're going to see me work on in this video are actually kind of fitting for this theme. They will all be shown at the end, by the way, and uh, it's seven in total. They're part of a bigger project I'm working on where I am making paintings and drawings with selected bits from all my old diaries that I have written starting at nine years old. This particular collection is called Determination. And the theme of the diary entries that ties it together is basically my determination to keep living, even though living is a struggle. And the reason I chose benches as the subject matter is the double-edged potential that I feel a park bench has. It can be where you hang out where you have no home to go to, and it's freezing and you can't sleep. It can also be where you sit and share an ice cream with a lover in the spring and you're squinting in the sun and kissing and all of that stuff. And so that sort of double duality thing I think fits with my views on life. Life is not easy and I despise positivity that's all about pretending that it is. Like no, life is fucking hard. It sucks sometimes. But it's also beautiful and incredible and the one and only life that we get a chance to live. Two things can be true at the same time. I think living is really difficult, and I think it's absolutely worth continuing to fight for survival, and of course for a better world. Life is important, and humanity and the Earth deserve better than this. That's not an easy struggle either, but it's necessary to fight, and it's 100% possible to win. But about my birthday emotions, so when I was younger, I really struggled to imagine myself in the future. Not so much because I didn't want a future, but because I couldn't seem to find a way to function in the society that would like allow me a place in it. And I know now that I have a disability, and that's why I struggled so much to function, but I didn't know that for a long time. And so I felt really lost and worthless because I couldn't make life work. What I would do was improvise for about a year at a time, and then I would crash into burnout for a year. And after that year, I tried to rebuild my life, and I did that for about a year, and that sort of basic cycle went on until I was about 26. And during that time, I also probably could easily have become an alcoholic if I hadn't had a good support system by which I mostly mean my mom. Like, I I don't know, I wasn't coping well with struggling and I didn't know what was wrong. So yeah, I just didn't know how I was supposed to live. So I often felt like death was the only option. It's It was something I thought a lot about, but in hindsight now, it seems to me that I didn't actually like want it. I just saw no way to live. Like, I saw no options. Turning 25 was kind of a turning point for me. Partly because it was a number that I had fixated on as like a time when I should have my shit together. I don't know why 25 exactly, but that was how I had been thinking about it. But I think also largely because at that time I had made a friend who was autistic, and so I had started doing research about it, and I recognized a lot of things from my own life. So basically I had started the process of learning that what I thought were my personal failures as a shitty human being were actually very common experiences for autistic people. And the combination of that realization and the fact that I'd made it longer than I'd been able to picture made me think, well, since I'm still here, I might as well try to make my life more beautiful, more fulfilling. And for me, that meant starting to prioritize creativity. I didn't start drawing seriously until two years later, but if I hadn't made that decision then, I wouldn't be here making paintings today. 
The next year was also really important because that's when I got organized as a communist. So I began learning Marxist theory and started to understand scientifically things I'd previously sort of felt intuitively but hadn't been able to explain. And the world started making more sense to me. I mean, as much sense as capitalism can make with all its horrors. But understanding its internal logic made it way less overwhelming to read the news, for example. Like, things are horrible, but they do have explanations and consequently potential solutions. It was also just extremely invigorating to go from having opinions by myself and like post on Tumblr and Twitter, sign petitions uh, or whatever, to actually helping to build a real life revolutionary international. And um, I want to quote Leon Trotsky here about the founding of the Fourth International because I think this quote is really beautiful and explains why <laughs> this is important to me. This is the quote. Yes, our party takes each of us wholly, but in return it gives to every one of us the highest happiness, the consciousness that one participates in the building of a better future, that one carries on his shoulders a particle of the fate of mankind, and that one's life will not have been lived in vain." End quote. Now, it, it did take me a while to become wholeheartedly convinced, as I am now, that we can win and that a better world truly is possible. I needed to learn a bunch of things to get to this point, like why the Soviet Union, Union degenerated, why other revolutions have failed, um, the basics of Marxist philosophy, dialectical, dialectical materialism, before I got to that point. But that revolutionary optimism I have now is such a core part of my being and it's, it's another reason why I feel that my life and consequently my birth actually matters. My life matters because other human lives matter and I'm connected to them through the international and the small contributions that I can make to the struggle are worth making because humanity is worth a better life, like we are all worth trying and making an effort for. And that in includes me. <laughs> my life also connects to other human lives through art. And the other week I saw this quote from James Baldwin, the author, that I haven't been able to stop thinking about. And I think it fits into all of this. He said this, art would not be important if life were not important. And life is important, end quote. I recommend checking out the whole interview that this quote is from, I will link it below. But yeah, I saw this and it just hit me right in the heart. And this is a side note, but I also love how this is a really profound idea communicated in simple words. I think that's a real mastery of language. I, I have to read his books. Anyway, art is important because life is important. I fully believe that that is true. Like, we have never had human societies without art nor do I think we ever will. Making things with our hands is just so essential to us as a species. And just on a personal level for me, as you can gather from the story I have been telling you, art and life are extremely intimately connected. I make art because I am alive and human. And being alive so that I can make art and hopefully touch other lives is important, it matters. And I do think art and politics are two sides of the same coin here. Like where I used to feel like I had no place in the world and nothing to contribute to it. I now see that I do have things to give others. I can share the art I make and hopefully share some meaning through that. And I can make small contributions to the struggle for a better world. I, I wish I could do more, I wish I could make and share more art, and I wish I could fight more for communism. But I can do some things, and doing something is always better than nothing. I also have been thinking about it like this. Capitalism hates disabled people, and when I didn't know that I'm disabled, that made me hate myself. Now that I know that I'm disabled, I hate capitalism right back. And I do think that hate is another coin that has two sides, by the way. Like, I have an 
intense love for human life which turns into hatred for capitalism because capitalism does not value human life as we are seeing every day but to sum up that is why i get emotional about birthdays i didn't think i would live this long like i never imagined i would turn 34 so every birthday feels to me both like a gift and something like an achievement I, I got another year, I was granted another year, but I also made it through another year. I mean, I didn't do that without support, obviously, but like I helped, <laughs> I, I did my part. And I realized that it may sound strange to some that I feel so strongly about surviving because I do have a decently comfortable and sheltered life compared to many. I, I am very aware of that, but that is just a matter of luck and it's not something I take for granted at all. If I had not had like the luck of basically having my mom, who is very supportive, I, I may not be here. And that is just pure luck. And I don't know, it's just, I'm really grateful for any comfort that I am allowed, but I'm also kind of angry about feeling gratitude because we shouldn't have to be lucky and feel grateful to merely be, be allowed to stay alive as disabled people or, you know, just people in general. Like, the system is bad, and the fact that I personally have been allowed to survive in it doesn't make it any less bad. And I just wanted to make that distinction because I feel that gratitude, while it can be really good for your mental state, and it is something that I make a point of practicing, it can also be a bit of a slippery slope to accepting the status quo and sort of only focusing on yourself as an individual. So I do think it's important to keep two thoughts in your head at the same time there. I'm very grateful that I have somewhere to live and I feel happy about that. I'm also pissed off that housing isn't available to everyone as a basic necessity of life. Two thoughts, one head can lose. <laughs> anyway, thank you so much for coming with me on this emotional journey and listening to my story. Being able to share this with people I think also matters for the reasons I mentioned. So, so I hope I, I reached someone. <laughs> um, feel free to let me know which one of the paintings is your favorite. They are all like coming up here soon. Or just leave an emoji in the comments to let me know that you were here and listened. Um, that would actually mean a lot to me. Um, I'm, I'm a bit nervous to post this video because I've been really earnest and that is scary. But I do believe that the world needs more earnestness. So I'm doing my part. Um, I hope I'll see you next time. And until then, take care of yourself. Okay, bye.